afternoon. My name is Chris Woodfield and welcome to uh, System Shift, Low Carbon Devon Inspire Ambition event focused on B Corp. Really excited to welcome you to this afternoon. Um, it's a beautiful day where I am, so thank you for joining us. Um, so super excited to dive in this afternoon to B Corp and what B Corp is and why it's important. So yeah, super excited. Um, make yourself comfortable. Um, there's a few more people joining. Um, so yeah, get, get settled in, make yourself feel comfortable. I'll just do a brief overview of what Low Carbon Devon is and what we're going to do today, and then we'll get started. So as I mentioned, my name's Chris. Uh, I work at the University of Plymouth on the Low Carbon Devon project. So Low Carbon Devon is all about inspiring, supporting and facilitating action on climate change around the low carbon agenda and sort of taking action to sort of rise to that to that climate challenge. It's focused on uh, we have a number of different avenues of support, but it's focused and aimed at Devon based SMEs. So local businesses in Devon. Um, and through the project, we have a number of different avenues, such as research collaborations with our researchers. We run something called Future Shift, the internship and leadership program. And we also do a series of events and workshops um, like this one. So, yeah, really excited to have you with us. Um, we're based at the Sustainable Earth Institute, the Sustainability Hub on the University of Plymouth campus. And I'll come to that later because because we have an event next week, which is actually in person um, at the hub. So so I'll be um, explaining a bit more about that later. But do, but do come along. Um, but for now, for, for today, um, if you're able to to keep your your cameras on, that would be awesome. Um, so we can see you. It's, it's really great to sort of have you here. And it's really great to see that sort of facial recognition and interact with you. So that would be awesome. Um, but do understand, obviously, it's, it's your choice. Um, if you keep your mic microphones on mute for the minute, um, just so we can ensure a sort of smooth experience for everyone. And also this event's being recorded so we can share it afterwards. You know, many people have got in touch and said uh, they can't make it today, but they'd love to hear about it and see it afterwards. So just to let you know that as well. But if you if you've just joined and if you've joined, we'd love to hear who's who's sort of in the room. So if you'd like to sort of put who you are, maybe in the chat, um, put where you're from or what who you're representing or what you do in the chat. It'd be really useful just for us to get a sort of flavor and a feel of, of who's in the room. Um, so please do that. Uh, and that would be awesome. Really love now to. Um, invite our three speakers onto the sort of virtual stage um, to just say hello to them and introduce them. So if we're able to do that, that would be awesome. So we have um, three speakers lined up today to talk about B Corp. And we have um, Ed Bird, Tom Bourne and Catherine Draper. So really now I was just going to hand over to to say a quick hello to, to them, um, to sort of say for sort of 30 seconds to a minute about who, who you are and maybe just what's what's exciting you right now. So so maybe, um, Ed, we could start with you. Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Ed Bird. I'm um, one of the founders of Bird Eyewear. We're based in Exeter. We're a family business. Um, and uh, yeah, we've, we've been going a few years now. We make sustainable eyewear. Um, I'll be talking more about all of that later on, but um, what is exciting me at the moment is our new upcoming launch of children's frames made from a very kind of innovative material that I'll talk about later. And um, Christmas always gets me a little bit excited. So um, those two kind of to get, those two combined is uh, very exciting. Awesome. Cool. Cheers, Ed. Um, yeah, is it? It's a bit too early for Christmas, isn't it? Not mention that. But um, thank you. <laughs> um, 
let's move over to say hello to um to Catherine. Great. Hi everyone. I think that is the first person I've heard say they're excited for Christmas. So maybe I'm also gonna get excited for Christmas. Um it's lovely weather. I'm I'm based in London and it's lovely weather out, out the window. And I've also had a busy week with lots of virtual events. So I'm kind of excited to be meeting more people, even if it is uh, virtually. Um, I'm the engagement manager at B-Lab UK. So B-Lab UK is the registered charity behind the B Corp movement in the UK. And I've been part of the team for, for coming up to about five years, which has flown by. But um, yeah, really excited to be part of the event today and to get to meet everyone as well. Um, I guess I'll hand over to, to Tom. Thanks, Catherine. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Thomas Bourne. I'm the founder of Greenheart Consulting, um, and I'll tell you a bit more about us in a minute, but we are a, a full service social and environmental impact consultancies, um, among other things, helping businesses through the B Corp certification process. Um, I was going to say that I'm really excited about the sheer pace of um, increased interest of business in B Corp and all things ESG. But now I'm just excited about Christmas. So um, thanks, Ed, for, for sowing that seed. <laughs> Try not to talk about it too much later. Awesome. <laughs> um, thanks, Tom. And thanks, Catherine and Ed, as well. Um, so what we're going to do is basically go into the, into the flow of, of, each, um, of each speaker. We'll start with, with Catherine. Um, but whilst, whilst everyone's speaking, feel free to think of some questions. Um, see what makes you curious. Um, do pop your questions in the chat or hold on to them and we can discuss them um, at the end. So what we'll do is we'll take all of the questions after everyone's spoken. Um, but if you're one of those people that, that will forget your question, do pop it in the chat and I can, I can pick it up from there. So yeah, really, this is an interactive event. So, so really would love some sort of discussion um, when we get to that point. So really appreciate, um, really encourage you to just think of some some curious um, and courageous questions for our speakers but now let's let's go straight into um, to Catherine so yeah over to you right I am sharing my screen so before I kick off just to, just to check that you can see my screen and the right bits of my screen yeah. great amazing um, I am the only person doing slides today. And I'm giving a bit of an overview of the B Corp movement. So hopefully these slides will be useful um, and I'll, I'll share them um, with Chris and the team afterwards. And hopefully you can kind of dive into the slides a little bit more. So probably the best place to start is what is B Corp? Why are we doing this? What is the B Corp movement? And so um, the, the kind of fundamental crux of the B Corp movement is really the recognition around systems failure and realizing that place holding, uh, place, placing shareholder primacy at the center of our um, societal, political and economic structures means that we've been left facing a climate emergency, the, the collapse of our natural systems, unsustainable levels of inequality. I probably don't have to go on. I think we probably <laughs> all, all know the picture, but really, um, at, at VLAB and the B Corp movement, we see these as symptoms of uh, a system failure, which really means that our economic model is running on a system that is no longer fit for purpose. And that it's a really a system that focuses on short term planning and is unresponsive to a world of increasingly limited resources. And so the global B Corp movement really focuses on placing stakeholders at the heart of all businesses. So harnessing the position of your stakeholders to transform the role of business and society to make sure that it works for all people and planet. And so this is a, a very kind of big ambition to really shift the, the system of capitalism um, to a, a system of stakeholder capitalism. And so um, what you're going to see on the next slide here is really a, a nice visual representation of this systems change that we're looking to see. So these graphics here were actually um, a campaign we did, I think, last year, the year before, um, with a collective called Imperative 21. And you can see here it's really about this shift of our societal, political, natural and, and economic structures from extractive to regenerative and really seeing that we need to address the root causes of these problems um, and really kind of reinvent the system to ensure that it works for both people and the planet. And so um, 
this nice slide here shows that we're not the only ones talking about this. Um, and we've really seen the impact of the, the movement and a kind of an in increase in this conversation around upending shareholder primacy um, across lots of different areas and really coming into the mainstream. So this um, graph here you can see is around mentions in the press around um, upending shareholder primacy and it actually increased by 397% from 2019 to 2020. So despite the pandemic, we've really seen that there's such an increase in interest in doing business differently and really proving that there's a demand for a better model of business. And so, um, as I mentioned before, I work for B-Lab UK, kind of managing and, and helping the, the UK community of B Corps grow. And we've really seen this shift in the UK in, in terms of our certifications and community as well. So in the UK community, um, we've had I think uh, a year on year growth in terms of B Corps who've certified um, over 160%. And also every year we do a really exciting campaign in March called B Corp Month. And we saw over a thousand new businesses logging into to the B Impact Assessment to, to learn more about B Corp, which was amazing. And also, these are some exciting stats that sound like we're tooting our own horn, maybe. But the UK has actually become the fastest growing B Corp community in the world, which is amazing considering we've got we've got B Corps from over, I think, um, 70 countries in the world. And also the UK actually hosts the global hub for the most B Corps based in one location. So London is the capital city, the B Corp capital city of the world. We want to challenge that. I'm going to talk about that later. Let's make Exeter the B Corp capital of the world. <laughs> Um, and so um, some of the next slides are just a bit more um, of, a, of a description, a bit more of an overview about what we're doing in the UK. So something that we've launched um, quite recently around this element of systems change is the Better Business Act. And so the Better Business Act is um, a campaign run by B-Lab UK to, to really amend um, Section uh, 172 of the Companies Act. So really ensuring that company directors are responsible for advancing the interests of shareholders alongside those of the wider society and the environment. And so while the, the B Corp movement is involved in this, it's really a business led campaign um, driven by leaders in the B Corp community, but also outside of the B Corp community um, that really recognise that the law has fallen behind business culture and who have really proven that this approach to business um, that the B Corp movement are really showcasing actually um, works for everyone. So it's a really unique opportunity to demonstrate the kind of UK leadership on this um, global stage. And we're yeah very excited, very excited about it as well, because we really think that the world really needs every business at its best, creating good jobs, adding values to society and, and taking responsibility for environmental impact. So that's a big focus that we're doing kind of on that systems level piece. Um, but probably what you all heard a lot more about is the B Corp certification. And so this slide here is just a little reminder about what B Corps, what certified B Corps are. So um, the B Impact Assessment is a tool that doesn't just focus on one product or service, but it's an online assessment that asks you questions across all of your different stakeholders. So your governance, how you treat your workers, the community, um, the environment and your customers. And so that's one piece around the B Impact Assessment, but it's also um, a really interesting element around the mission lock. So all of our B Corps in the UK are legally required to consider the impact of their decisions on all of their stakeholders. So all B Corps in the UK have actually amended their articles of association to include this commitment um, in, the, in the DNA of their business. And then lastly, um, the, the B Corp movement is a global movement of businesses that are all kind of committing to the same values and really supporting each other to improve and drive uh, global change. So the next slide, very colourful, gives you a bit of an overview about this global movement. So um, the B Corp movement actually started back in uh, 2006 in um, Philadelphia in the US. And so since then, it's grown amazingly across the rest of the, of the world. And so in terms of our structure, we've got um, a, a standards trust, which are the people behind the B Impact Assessment, and they do the kind of verifying and certification of new B Corps. But we've also got um, a global partner network. So 
All of the flags that you can see here are part of our global partner network. So we've got lots of different global partners like ourselves at B-Lab UK, across South America, across Australia and New Zealand, across Europe, um, and also across Asia. So um, the, the UK movement was started um, about five years ago in the UK, but it's amazing to see that we've now got over 4,000 B Corps globally, and we've got um, global partners in um, 10 different global partner hubs representing B Corps in 75 countries. So a very global movement, but the amazing thing about this is everyone who is signed up as part of the global movement um, is aligned to the same purpose. So this is the uh, Declaration of Interdependence, which I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing out loud, <laughs> but hopefully you can see it on your screen here. And so the Declaration of Interdependence really declares this simple truth that business should work for everyone and so recognizing that we're all connected and that business doesn't operate in a vacuum and so it's really about redefining what success in in business looks looks like and what the leaders of companies should be considering and really ensuring that they compete not only to be the best in the world and to but actually to be the best for the world so every b corp when they certify they actually sign a little version of the declaration of interdependence which is really nice um and then the next slide here is just as i mentioned earlier london is potentially the the hub of the most of our B Corps, but what we've been um, really focusing on over the last few years is getting outside of London and really kind of growing the diversification of the B Corp uh, movement across the UK. So excitingly, you can see down in the Southwest, we've actually got 55 B Corps. And I think it's probably gone up by a few since the last time we updated um, this, this map here. And so something that we've been doing across the UK is um, creating B Local Hubs, um, which is really about kind of collating and encouraging B Corps in each of these different areas where you can see a little B local sign um, to get together and, and really kind of raise awareness and, and have localized conversations in each of these different areas um, and that's open to all other businesses they do events they do kind of information sharing so if you're based in any of these spaces definitely get it get involved and get involved in some of these conversations as well. Um, and then kind of diving into a bit more of the of the knowledge sharing today. So globally, um, we've got a B Corp uh, climate collective and it's actually a, a website which I can pop in the chat as well. And so the objective and the aim of this group really is to um, inspire collective action both in the B Corp community but also in the wider business networks as well so our climate collective um, is really about sharing best practice and knowledge and so um, one really useful thing that could uh, could be useful to share with you all is um, a section on this uh, website which is called the B Climate Tools Base and so that's actually a library a, a curation of all of the documents and all of the how to's and resources and playbooks around um, climate, both from the B Corp community, but also across different um, experts and, and different networks as well. So it's a really hopefully a useful place if you're starting to kind of think about your net zero or climate action journey as well. Um, and so some of the things that we're uh, doing around the climate and trying to kind of galvanize action on um, the first one here is our net zero by 2030 campaign. So obviously um, kind of being being quite ambitious ahead of the Paris Agreement, but really encouraging our, our B Corps in our community and all other businesses to really think about um, committing to net zero by 2030. And so uh, we're really seeing that ahead of COP26 in November, this is a really powerful um, chance for the UK community of, of all businesses to really show that we're committed to climate leadership. And so this has been a big focus of my role over the last year is really galvanizing the B Corp community, especially to make these commitments and to stick to this um, timeline and think, okay, how can we get really um, involved and how can we kind of take a lot of action about thinking about our um, climate emissions as well. So on the right hand side of this um, slide is a bit more kind of specific information about what the net zero by 2030 commitment actually means. And on the left, I think is a nice newspaper advert that was taken out. I, I think I, I can't see it. I think it's in German <laughs> um, by our German we got community. Um, yeah, so a, a really global um, campaign that we're trying to do to, to galvanize a lot of um, movement ahead of COP26. 
And then this next slide here, as I mentioned earlier, through our climate collective, we're really trying to pull together a lot of um, playbooks and resources because we hear a lot that there's a lot of um, inspiration, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of um, need to take action and people can often say great now how do I do it what do I do where do I start so this um, playbook here that we released a couple of years ago is all around um, how to declare a climate emergency internally and how to take climate action and so this playbook here really kind of talks you along that journey from tips for, for hosting a board meeting or, or ideas about how to engage other people across your business that might not be that bought in on taking time action. So I will again share this link um, in the chat, but it's a really useful document to kind of dive into and think, okay, how can I start to take action? internally at my business. Um, and then here's another playbook that we've released um, recently around climate justice. Um, and so this was a perfect example of the power of our community because a group of B Corps actually came together, um, I think at the beginning of last year, um, to really explore about how we can embed climate justice, which I will go on to speak about on the next slide, um, and how we can really embed that in the climate action um, internally and, and in our businesses as well. And so um, this, again, is another really useful guide and playbook about kind of how to start having these conversations and, and how to take action um, and make sure you're centering people and justice. So what is climate justice? Um, this is a wonderful quote, quote from uh, Alonda, who is part of our um, global B Lab global team. And so it says that the climate crisis causes disproportionate negative impacts on the people who are least responsible for creating it. And so when we think about climate justice, it's really important to make sure that the actions and the um, policies and practices you're taking internally at a business are really um, embedding and, and centering people and justice at the heart of that, especially when we're thinking about having a hol holistic positive impact on the world, making sure we're kind of thinking holistically about all of our um, stakeholders. And so this next slide here, I love, it's one of my favourite bits of the playbook, and it's just a really nice um, slide to kind of think about when we're thinking about this journey. And I think the, the main thing about um, the, the journey of about taking climate action is really just it is a continuous journey. It's all about continuously learning and it's kind of being open along that journey here. And so, um, yeah, a useful thing to take a look at and maybe drop it in the chat where you think you are on the journey. Are you climate curious? Are you climate courageous? I think I'm probably somewhere in the middle, but it's also a really, a really useful thing to kind of continuously commit to reflecting and, and taking action around that. And then the last slide from me, I think I'm hopefully around uh, the, the right time. Um, but another big campaign that we're doing that is also open to all businesses um, ahead of COP26 is called Boardroom 2030. And this really is an invitation for all businesses to consider what a boardroom conversation could look like in 2030. So really imagining who is around the table, where is it taking place, what's on the agenda, and what rules are being followed, and how are these decisions being made. And so thinking about the, the future of your companies and thinking about representation. So is it about engaging some of your junior employees in these conversations? Is it about having youth, youth representation on, on your board? Or really, it could mean um, setting the conversation in a, in a stimulating environment. I know one of our, our B Corps down in the Southwest Finisterre we're having a little conversation about maybe we could do our boardroom activation on surfboards in the sea. The, the sea levels are rising. I can imagine everyone would suddenly get very excited in, in that boardroom activation as well. And so it's a really useful, um, hopefully a useful way to really think about how businesses can really be making these decisions and thinking about the long term impact as well and making sure it's kind of inclusive and equitable and, and considering all of your stakeholders and, and bringing that together in quite a um, creative way. So we've got a whole activation toolkit and, and, and lots of tips um, around that as well. So yeah, that was a lot that I've just covered there. I think probably we're gonna save questions for the end, um, but hopefully that was all useful and not too overwhelming in, in, a, in a short space of time. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you, Catherine um yeah we'll take questions at the end so so do keep them coming um if you've got questions uh put them in the chat now or save them save them for when we get there after tom and ed have spoken as well but yeah really beautiful thank you um i really love that sort of courageous uh committed and curious um 
sorry, yeah, curious, committed, and courageous um, aspect. So that's really cool. And love the boardroom 2030. I've shared that with my team at the university to see if we can do some some uh, meetings outside. So hopefully something will come from that. But yeah, I really encourage you to check out those links, and we can we can share that. We can share what Catherine shared with you um, to all attendees as well. Um, thank you, Catherine. I think we'll flow straight on to, to Tom, uh, Thomas Bourne from Greenheart. Um, over to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Chris, and hi again. Um, I, it flows quite neatly because I guess what I do and my team do is, is help companies to explore and live all the stuff that Catherine has been talking about. So what I'd like to do is kind of give you a bit of an insight into the conversations that we're having and the work that we're doing um, in the hope that it'll sort of prompt and provoke some thoughts within um, those of you that are running businesses or talking to businesses as well. So um, it's great to be uh, at a um, Devon event. I've spent my entire career in and around Devon. Um, I was a lawyer at Bon Pierce for many years, for those of you in the Plymouth area, um, probably a familiar name. Um, and then went off to run a couple of uh, relatively well-known local organic food businesses. So that was my kind of proving ground, if you like. Um, but set up Greenheart in 2015 because I wanted to go back to my advisory roots um, and also put into practice somehow um, what at the time was a sort of latent interest for me in responsible business. Um, really, I spent a lot of my career exploring kind of how do you take the... Um, you know, the notion of sustainability that we've had for the last 20 or 30 years about doing less bad and convert that into something that is um, accessible for business, because I think it, the, the two have had a clash up until relatively recently. Um, and so everything came home to roost for me when I discovered B Corp, um, because that captures this kind of idea of, look, it's okay to make profit, it's okay to seek growth and be ambitious, um, but to do it in the right way, to do it in a way that is changing the narrative and changing the system. So the minute I saw um, B Corp, I met B Corp, I knew I had to be involved. I was one of the earlier B leaders back in 2017, so people who are trained to help uh, companies through the certification process. Um, and of course, I put Greenheart through the, um, the, the certification process in the same year. So we've been a certified B Corp since then. And of course, what's happened since, since 2017 and actually really um, accelerated massively over the last two years is an explosion in demand for what we offer. So we've grown our, um, our offering in, in response to that. So we're now, a, you know, we don't just do B Corp, we're a sort of full service social environmental impact consultancy with a, a team of nine at the moment. Um, and we, you know, we, we, we do all the stuff that wraps around that and I'll share with you in a minute. Um, but fundamentally we are driven by a shared vision that all businesses should thrive by operating as if people and planet mattered as much as profit. So for me, that's what purposeful business means. It's about, you know, working within that sort of system dynamic um, to eliminate all the harm that we create and strive to strive to have a positive impact both by a, our operations but also a sort of core business model so it's a very very different way of thinking about the role our business has to play in society um, and it's it's one that is very much in tune with the direction of the sort of global narrative so I've always been fundamentally passionate about um, sustainability and, um, and and social equity. You know, I can't wake up in the morning and look at my children, let alone all the other groups being left behind by the economic model without getting a sort of extra burst of energy. Um, so that gets me up in the morning and then the passion of my colleagues and my clients really keeps me going through the day, um, which is just as well because this is an exhausting sector to work in. I'll be honest, I'm sure Catherine and everyone can attest to that there is so much to do and there is um, so little time it feels um, but as well as having that kind of deeply ingrained passion I'm also a pragmatic business person and so I do see all of this narrative through the lens of business risk and opportunity and I think it's really important that the debate is framed in those terms so that we you know we all recognize that this is relevant to us so 
from a risk point of view, you often hear that being broken down into sort of three key elements. So there are some huge regulatory risks of um, not embracing social and environmental management into the core of your business because the legislation, particularly the environmental legislation, is getting and will get tighter, not looser. Um, the tangible risks, I think, are now harder to avoid and they manifest through things like supply chain disruption, and we've seen that this year through extreme weather, pandemics, whatever. These all have a link through to the issues that Catherine touched on at the start. Um, and particularly, you know, one very close to my heart, you know, the, the um, volatility of commodity prices caused by the fact that things like, uh, you know, rare earth metals are limited in supply. So how on earth do we deal with that if our model is just kind of continuously extracting them and then ultimately throwing them away? Um, and there are a bunch of transitional risks as well. So the, 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 obs the potential obsolescence of models that are not aligned with a low carbon future is something that people are getting to grips with. And you see, see the oil companies really, I think, struggling to, to sort of, or, you know, and in many cases, taking some very bold action to deal with the sort of risks that that, that faces and, you know, avoiding being a, an undesirable equity to hold in you know, those stranded assets all over the globe. Um, but, you know, because we're optimists, we like to look at the opportunities for businesses, you know, opportunities to get ahead of the regulation and avoid the costs and complications um, of not being prepared for that. Um, the opportunity to have better resilience than others in your, you know, in, in your sector, because your supply chains are, um, are built to withstand and, and, and preferably you know, avoid some of the more critical, uh, you know, risks that are, are, are facing them. But also, you know, and this is where it gets really exciting, I think, you know, what are the first mover advantages for taking a business model to market that doesn't just factor all this in, but actually provides the solutions? You know, it wasn't long ago that people weren't talking about electric vehicles. You know, if you look at just the the, the pace of innovation and the pace of demand um, that has come with that, that is one small example of all the things that will be required to get us out of this hole. So we're talking with businesses um, on all of these sorts of things. Obviously, B Corp certification remains a, a really important um, work stream for us. And as I mentioned earlier, the the volume and the pace of that is just ramping up hugely. So we work with a huge range of companies from across sectors, from nappies to beauty to fashion to law firms, to, you know, you name it, magazine publishers. They are all fundamentally committed to measuring and managing their impact um, and inviting um, consultancies like us to help them um, improve what they're doing. Of course, with that comes a whole um, focus on environmental and carbon management. And, and Catherine sort of really called that out specifically. Um, there's a huge demand um, for that. It's a complex technical area and people you know, really want to get it right. Supply chain impact management. Um, we have um, a number of, of, of projects like this where, where people sort of um, with complex supply chains realize that both there is a risk inherent in the complexity of those supply chains, but also a great opportunity because they're global, you know, a large proportion of any given company's footprint uh, is likely to be in its supply chain. And therefore, you know, how can we use our, our, our um, purchasing power and our leverage as procurers uh, and influencers of our supply chain to make a difference? Um, we, I, I don't want to bang on about us at all, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a real privilege to be in this space and to be faced with a kind of hyper growth in our own business because it gives us a chance to explore some of the more dynamic business models um, and perhaps experiment a bit with some of the stuff that Catherine touched on earlier. So we look very much at building um, Green Heart along a regenerative leadership um, basis, which is, you know, it, 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 it sort of debunks the kind of traditional hierarchical way of looking at business and tries to reflect natural systems because we think that is a better way of doing business. Um, we're also working really hard to disrupt the diversity and balance in the sustainability sector because um, it is absolutely horrendous. 3% of sustainability professionals in the UK um, identify as non-white, which is just awful. So we have a role and a responsibility to deal with that. 
Um, and we also have a sort of fundamental social commitment to give 5% of our time uh, pro bono. And we direct this uh, as a policy to organizations that are championing and enabling the sort of economy we're talking about. Um, and also, um, helps our people uh, improve their lived experience of the issues on which we adv advise because that's so important. You know, we recognize uh, we are in the privileged West um, and it's not enough for us to sit um, sort of uh, uh, disassociated from these issues. We want to get our fingers dirty, get our feet on the ground and take our clients on that journey so that they really know um, the impact and the potential impact that they and their um, money and their businesses can have. So I'm sorry, I haven't talked a lot yet about B Corp specifically. I sort of think Catherine has, has done a lot of that and we can come back to some detail in the questions. But I did want to give um, my top three reasons why B Corp is, is such a useful tool in this uh, discussion for businesses. So firstly, it is without doubt the most holistic and accessible set of ESG standards for businesses that is available on the market. For me, it is the template for businesses that want all the right architecture in place to future-proof their model and cope with the risks and opportunities that I've, I've touched on. Um, critically, it is, um, it, it is also almost unique, I think, or it is unique in, in the sense that it, uh, has, it allows independent verification against those standards. So you're not just marking your own homework, but you are, uh, you, you are shown to be performing against them, um, which hugely increases credibility and trust with all the important stakeholder groups, consumers, employees, investors, communities, you name it. I'm sure Ed will touch on those um, in a bit. Um, and the community, um, I have never been involved in a more collaborative, passionate, unified business community as the Beeple community. It is unusual in most walks of life to find competing CEOs wanting to share their practice, open their books and talk to each other in quite the way that B Corps do. Um, it is, you know, it's very, very stimulating. The energy that comes with it is driving change. So I just wanted to leave you with my sort of two key takeaways um, as you sort of go back to your desks tomorrow morning. The, the two things that I ask is firstly, engage, because the, if you're not already, the topic of ESG, sustainability, impact, whatever you want to call it, is no longer optional. The B Corp framework gives you the perfect entry point to start measuring and managing your company's impact. It'll take time, it'll take resource, and it'll take money, but it's a critical investment in the resilience of your business. Um, I know Chris is going to mention in a little bit, but there are some workshops coming up uh, with the university um, that I'm, uh, my company is supporting. Um, really easy entry point to start exploring some of these issues. And my second takeaway, just stay positive. I think it is really easy for us all to become despondent at the enormity of the challenge that we face with all this stuff. But the global narrative is changing incredibly fast. And I think if we all commit to do our bit, the future might, might look an awful lot better than it does now. Thank you. Awesome. Great, Tom. Um, yeah, some lovely words there and, and so much um, that you covered. Really love to um, delve into detail um, in the discussion in a minute. So, yeah, really lovely overview. Thank you. Really love the just the key takeaways, but also that notion of sort of collaboration um, and that positivity, but also that sense of sort of regeneration and regenerative business and sort of moving beyond sustainability, which is awesome. But then how can we shift that from sort of purposeful business, sustainable business, but also regenerative business? So really love that. Um, thank you. Um, so if you've got questions for Tom, um, do put them in the chat and, and we'll dive into those shortly, but it will flow straight on to, to Ed. So thanks, Tom. And, and over to you, Ed. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, great. Some two like lovely examples to follow. Firstly, um, Catherine kind of setting like the like the scene, the foundation, the background, and then Tom following on with how and why it's it's relevant. And then I guess for for me and for us and for my company, it's really just sharing some insight about us as a I, I guess a relatively young company 
becoming a B Corp and going on that journey and some of the whys behind it and what's kind of driven that and how that's impacted us and um, our customers and so on. So um, for those of you that joined slightly later, my name's Ed. I'm one of the founders of Bird Eyewear. We are a company based in Exeter, but we're now all kind of working remotely. We're a family business. So my other brothers are based in uh, in Plymouth and down in Mount Hawk as well in Cornwall. And um, we've been going a few years. And for us, what we wanted to create as a business was a kind of a better approach to eyewear. So we make sustainable eyewear. We use innovative materials. We use a lot of um, things like woods that are FSC certified. Um, we use acetates, which are kind of their bioacetates. So they don't use oil-based polymers. Um, here's an example of one of our kind of wooden, wooden pairs. You can see all the lovely wooden layers in there that we've engineered. And um, we, we wanted to create a business that not only made great products, but that also in some way did good as well. So for us, it wasn't just enough to kind of try and make a really nice pair of sunglasses or pair of glasses. It was about how can we use this business to one, kind of create change in the eyewear industry, two, create change in our local community, and three, how can we try and create change on a kind of global platform as um tom was saying just now you know there are there are so many issues that need um that need addressing so i mean of course that is no small challenge particularly from us you know we're kind of uh, you know some ragtag boys from devon trying to set up an eyewear business we've never done it before so you know we've gone through a lot of a lot of learning but we one thing that we knew from a very early stage is that we wanted to be a more than profit business so we wanted to be a business that did good and we were following brands like Patagonia in the states or closer to home brands like Finisterre who you know have really helped kind of pioneer the B Corp movement and um, for us that was really inspirational about the the kind of holistic approach to business and it's something that we really like um, about being a B Corp is that it's not just about having your, you know, your product certified, but it's about looking at the entire company, the entire business from, you know, from your, from your kind of governance and your board right through to your supply chain, through to your environmental impact, through to your stakeholders. And when you bring all of those things together, it just adds up and makes, um, makes a really big difference. Um, First and foremost, it was partly for us kind of to prove to ourselves that we were doing all right, that we were creating a better business. Um, but it's become so much more than that because um, it's a great kind of asset for consumers and for customers to kind of know or hear about some of the things that we're doing. Um, there are still a lot of people that don't know much about B Corp and there's probably, you know, there could be many people on this call that don't know much about B Corp as well, which for us has been a really good thing because people come, um, customers come to us and they'll be interested in, you know, buying some glasses or some sunglasses and they'll say, but what is B Corp? And then we can explain it to them. We can share more about what we're doing, how we're trying to kind of change our business from the ground up, how we're kind of, um, you know, thinking about our carbon impact and so on. And that just, you know, it creates a chain reaction from kind of from business to consumer to community. And through that process, it, it can become a really powerful, um, really powerful driver. Um, so one of the other things that we really love about being a B Corp is the fact that it's not just a one time deal. We, we didn't want to just get our products certified and, you know, that's it. We've got the, we've got the stamp, you know, we're, we're, we're a kind of, um, we're a good um, supplier, but it's really an ongoing process. Like it doesn't stop. So although it took us six months to get our uh, B Corp certification and kind of go through the whole process, 
um, it's really been an ongoing thing. And, you know, even now we are working on things for our reassessment, which will be in kind of one and a half years or so. Um, and the goal of that is to improve our score. So being scored on all of these things in our business, it highlights areas where we can improve. So we know exactly where we scored low, where we need to improve. And um, as uh, Tom was saying, the great thing about the B Corp community is that it gives you a really good platform, great community to kind of learn and understand how you can improve those things. And um, so, yeah, it's been it's been a really interesting journey for us. It's been, you know, it's been really kind of um, edifying as a business. It's been it's kind of improved all of our processes almost from from start to finish. And um, I mean, I think kind of the key takeaway, as um, as Thomas said, from me would be that it's about just trying to do better. It's about trying to do that little bit more. Um, our one of our taglines is better eyewear for a better world, which really kind of sums up that drive to be a better business. And as Tom was saying, you know, we really feel that B Corp just kind of encompassed um, everything that we needed. And it still does. And on a, on a daily and a weekly basis, I'm connecting with other B Corp uh, companies and CEOs, sharing information. Um, looking at where we can improve our supply chain, how we can do things better, how we can you know, restructure things in a better way, how we can lessen our carbon impact and so on. So it's just ongoing. And so I think the fact that it's kind of come at this time where the world is in such need of you know, um, such a kind of combined effort to make change, um, I think is, um, is a really great thing. Chris, can I hand back to you? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ed. That's great. Thanks for that overview. Um, yeah, really great to have a, a local example. I mean, where where can we where can we find your your eyewear? Is it sort of in local shops or is it online mainly? Uh, yes, yeah, some shops, but easiest way is just to uh, find us at Find Your Birds. And that's dot uh, com or social media, and you will find us, and you can uh, see more about what what we're up to. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, well, yeah, really love the overview. I'd love to bring if we could bring um, Catherine and Tom on as well, and we can sort of delve into some some questions. Um, welcome back. <laughs> um, so do keep your questions coming. There's a few that have come in, so so really grateful for that. Um, if you've got further questions, do put them in the chat. Um, I just wanted to kick off, actually. Oh, sorry. Sorry, um, you were going to kick off. I was going to pick up on a point I'd made, but but you carry on, Chris. <laughs> That's cool. I was just going to pick up on something you said, Tom, um, about, so so maybe it's a perfect, perfect segue, but um, saying about what gives you energy, and you were saying, you know, your your children give you energy, or hope. So I just wanted to kick off maybe just with Ed and maybe Tom as well, if you want to say something different, but maybe with Ed and Catherine as well about what gives you energy and just a short sort of um, speak to that. Ed, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So what gives me energy? Yeah, it's really, I mean, going back to what Tom was saying um, earlier, I think the fact that, that um, there is such a drive now not just within the b corp community but in the wider kind of global community seeing the need for change the need to um almost kind of reinvent the system that we've been building up over the last few hundred years um that really gives me energy and for us it's an opportunity to pioneer new things and that's something as, as a company we we love to try and pioneer new things um, so our, our latest thing is making, um, this, is, this is a pair of frames that are made out of um, castor or castor beans um, and um, that we'll be launching prior to Christmas. And it's, it's just kind of getting creative and, you know, like new materials and new systems and, um, you know, learning how to kind of reuse and recycle 
Um, yeah, all, all all of that stuff gives me gives me loads of loads of energy. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Um, well, what about you, Catherine? Yeah, I think I think very similarly. I think even my my journey into kind of the the climate space. I think I'm very much a climate optimist, and I think it's the thing that gives me hope is actually the power of business to kind of innovate and to try new things, like Ed said, and to kind of continuously be kind of working on things and, and scaling and innovating. And so I think I think there's a new thing every week that I see, and I think, wow, like packaging that is soluble in water or companies kind of doing really innovative things around supply chains or circular economy and so I think yeah even though the world is a slightly a stressful place and there's lots to focus on in terms of the failure I think it is really important to think about the kind of optimistic things that are happening out there and the kind of some of the solutions and, and how business can play a role in that as well yeah 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 definitely oh awesome thank you um yeah, Tom, do you want to pick up on that or, or flow into what you were going to mention? Well, I mean, it, it, it's linked, really. So what, what sort of prompted, you know, Ed prompted something when he said that this is about continuous improvement. And I think there's a really important point in the discussion that we have sort of day in, day out, is that this is very much a journey. You know, and I think of most of the businesses we start talking to, they are really on day one of this journey. Um, and actually B Corp certification is nowhere near the end of this journey. It has got to keep going and it's got to continue and it's got to iterate because in some senses, good is not good enough with the issues that are being dealt with here. Um, but also, you know, we need to not let perfection be the enemy of progress. I think when Catherine talked earlier about challenging the level of your ambition, both, you know, personally and at a corporate level, that's really important. You know, I think you've got to start with a sense of, of, of how far do you want to put, push this? And I think always encourage companies to have, a, you know, to have some, some moonshots that they want to aspire to and aim for. Um, but it is a journey of continuous improvement. Um, and so start where you are, let it iterate, but make sure it is a strategic journey. You know, really it should be very sort of densely built into everything you're doing as a business um, and as I say certification is not the end it is a very exciting point to celebrate but it should be onwards and upwards all the way from there. Yeah it's just the start of that journey isn't it and it's so uh, it's every three years I believe is that correct so the B Corp certification um, if you certify it's another three years and the sort of like you said, the standards and the, the questions sort of evolve and improve with that. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. Um, Something I was going to drop in and say, um, just because I know someone's had a question in the chat. So um, the B Impact Assessment, which I mentioned, um, is an online completely free tool. So you can log in and you can create a, an account and just go through the questions and see everything that all businesses are asked. So it's quite a transparent process. So um, I'll pop the, the link in the chat and we'll encourage anyone just to kind of log in, have a look and see some of the questions. And it's a very comprehensive process because it asks questions under each of your different stakeholders so it may be um do you pay the living wage or what's the you know your maternity and paternity policies or what's your um do you have a local purchasing policy so like a whole range of different questions under each of your different stakeholders and then that um depends on the size and the industry of your business as well so i'll pop the link in the chat and you can kind of see the process and the and the questions that um companies have to go through on that journey as well and actually, that's, that's quite a good starting point for illustrating one of the questions, what some specific examples of things a business has to do to get the certification. Um, so the, the questions that Catherine's alluded to, you know, fall within this assessment and, and effectively to be eligible to move forward for certification, you need, uh, and they're, they're scored. Um, sorry, Catherine, I'm doing your bit for you, but, uh, um, but to be eligible to move forward for certification, you need at least 80 points in the assessment. And typically, most companies, if you are a normal company, um, whatever normal is, um, but you know you haven't been through this process, might start at around 40 to 50, typically is what we see. Um, and so the journey from 40 or 50 to 80 involves making improvements against question like that, questions like that. So you know, do you have a, a, um, 
a, um, a forward-looking maternity policy that rewards people or, or encourages um, people with, with the right benefits and, and terms. Um, if not, then that would be an example of improvement. You know, review that sort of policy, review the sort of benefits you're giving to workers, um, some of which come, uh, you know, with a cost, not all of which um, do. You know, it may just be, um, yeah, th th there's a whole ream across those five areas. Um, but yeah, that just gives you a feel. You mentioned, um, the person who asked that question, of sort of how long that process takes. And yeah, a year and a half from being a 40 to 50 type company to certifying is not uncommon at all in my experience. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds great. Thanks, Tom. And um, yeah, like you said, it's the start of that journey for 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 people, and it's it is a journey, and it's a process that um, that needs to take needs to take time. You know, if it was easy, if you could just become a B Corp tomorrow, then it it would it wouldn't be as as stringent and as as sort of valuable and that that trustworthy as it is. I think. Um, I just wanted to pick up on one of the questions in in the chat around. Um, Social enterprise. So in, in Plymouth, we have something called the Plymouth Social Enterprise Network, um, which is great and it's and it's fab. And, I, and I'm sort of involved in it in organising our upcoming festival in November. So that's a little plug. We have a, a Plymouth Social Enterprise Network Festival, which is all around the Sustainable Development Goals this year in November. Um, but the question is, is around sort of um, why isn't, or maybe it doesn't seem to be, B Corp more integrated with the social enterprise movement, um, which sort of shares that same same vision um, of a sort of different business model and economy. And, and how can we ensure that there's these ideas are, are focused on sort of working together and, and further collaboration? Yeah, maybe one for me to take. <laughs> um, and so I think it's it's a really good question. And I think B Corp and social enterprise. Uh, are very different but very aligned in terms of the bigger picture and the idea of using business as a force for good. And so um, obviously in the UK, the social enterprise movement is quite uh, active and, and, and quite well known. And so there are some of our B Corps that are social enterprises. So Divine Chocolate, for example, and Toast Ale, and you know a lot of them that are um, social enterprise in terms of their um, profit lock and asset lock but then there are lots of b corps in our community that wouldn't really fit that um specific requirement of being a social enterprise and so i think um it's a it's a kind of alignment and a kind of supportive movement of each other and we're all kind of talking about the same message but in terms of the requirements of of certification it can slightly differ and so in the impact assessment you get asked lots of questions um, around your business model and if you have an impact business model and so a lot of um, social enterprises would get lots of points in that section and would um, kind of score potentially higher in the impact assessment um, in terms of their scores um, which is kind of capturing that social enterprise model but also the the kind of b corp um, movement and the and the impact assessment is also kind of um potentially more applicable to more mainstream businesses and kind of more um able to scale but it's definitely a kind of very aligned um to two certifications and and kind of a, all on the same goal hopefully that's a <laughs> a useful answer tom do you have anything to add to that well i i just want to add um thank you Catherine, I mean, obviously, massively applaud the incredible strides the social enterprise movement has made in the UK and elsewhere. Um, I think it's it's a bit like what I was saying earlier about how we reframe sustainability as a, a you know through the lens of, of business rather than just being a sort of you know let's all beat each other beat ourselves with sticks for doing so much um, that is bad. It's about taking the discussion to as broad uh, an audience as possible. And, you know, there are so many businesses, for-profit businesses out there for whom the social enterprise model doesn't work, um, but who do want to align with its ethos. So I think to, be, to have a way of, you know, of, of, spreading, of, of spreading the sort of, um, you know, the, the ideas and the values in a tangible way um, as broadly as possible is great. Yeah, no, great. I mean, I think that sort of prompted, I think another question that's come through related to that um, 
can sort of any company become a B Corp? So I think sort of a question that, that was asked to me uh, recently was can charities become a B Corp um, and sort of, or is B Corp just for not-profit companies, sorry, for-profit companies and trying to sort of shift their mindset to incorporate people and planet as well? Um, yeah, could somebody answer that around can charities become B Corps or is it, yeah, in terms of the eligibility? And I'm aware that I'm taking lots of the, <laughs> the questions. Um, so in terms of eligibility, charities can't come um, become a certified B Corp. It's for for-profit companies in the UK. But I think it's definitely, um, so the B Impact Assessment and using that tool and thinking about it in terms of improvement improvements and the ways you're doing um, your kind of operating activity, they can use the B Impact Assessment and it's a, it's a kind of useful tool. But in terms of the certificate, certification, there's a, um, uh, there's kind of certain requirements about um, having a kind of trait. Yeah, I, I can I can pop them in the chat, but um, yeah, it's just for-profit businesses in the UK. Yeah. Cool. No, thanks, Catherine. That's great. <laughs> um, that's fab. Uh, any other questions? Keep them coming. Um, I sort of had a question uh, which has also sort of been asked as well in the chat around um, other certifications um in terms of a sort of you mentioned b corp being a uh, holistic in terms of his business-wide operations um and looking holistically rather than products or services although it includes that as well are there sort of other certifications there's there's sort of loads out there and it's sometimes a minefield i think when looking at sort of environmental or social certifications which one should i go for which ones are better than others um i don't know whether you know, Ed, you looked at that and you thought, oh, actually B Corp is the way I'm going to go rather than this other one. Um, I don't know if you could speak to that or maybe, Tom, you have examples of other certifications. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can um, um, I can say a few words on that. So for us, um, we did look at other certifications, but B Corp really felt right because it just it just covered so much. And, and um, yeah, for us as a as a for-profit business, but wanting to make change. It was just a, a really good fit. Um, we do also have um, quite a few other certifications around our products, um, which is which are also great. And they just kind of underline and underpin a lot of our kind of supply chain and materials and um, and things, things like that. But they complement each other really, really well. Yeah, great. Um... Tom, what about you? Do you sort of, when people come and ask you for advice or consulting, do you sort of outline a various, a variety of different approaches or do they ask for specific other certifications as well as B Corp? Yeah, I think minefield is an understatement, Chris, potentially, because, you know, of course there's, you know, just a myriad of product certifications that are, you know, specific to sectors or or um, whatever. And then there are, you know, there there are a number. I would say there are a number of complementary certifications that um, that, depending on sector and business model, can really um, help focus. So, for example, I mean, probably organic is is the best example of that. You know, B Corp will not will not certify a product as organic, obviously, um, but rewards organic certification um, in ingredients or sales. Um, similarly, you know, some of the things like investors and people or ISO 14001 for environmental management, these are all kind of complementary and fit within it. So I'd, I'd say we, rather than um, proposing alternative certifications, because I, I really don't think there are any quite like B Corp, we, we tend to find ourselves working with complementary certifications. Of course, there's a, a separate question around um, sustainable, voluntary sustainability reporting uh, frameworks, of which there are literally hundreds, um, which is you know, a debate that we don't kind of get too stuck into because we're very much focused on action and helping companies um, you know, improve their impact rather than just talk about it. Um, so, you know, that, that's, a, that's a whole different minefield, perhaps, that we don't need to stray into today. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Thanks for that um, overview. Um, I guess picking up on that a little bit, um, 
there's a question related to um, in terms of sort of standardized uh, metrics like G GDP um, in terms of one, one of the things that gives me energy and gives me hope is, is seeing examples like uh, Bhutan and sort of gross national happiness um, and things like that. Um, the question is sort of, which I think you might have covered, but I'm just curious in case we haven't, um, in terms of sort of does the B Corp model have suggestions for equivalent alternative metrics at the corporation level to replace um, things like return on investment or EPS? Um, would anyone like to take that one? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I think maybe if Ed was going to unmute, he could talk to it in terms of practice. Um, but something that's probably useful um, to mention is around impact reporting in the UK. So as part of the legal requirement that B Corps make, um, they commit to writing an impact report um, each financial year. And so that really is um, kind of bringing to life the idea of triple bottom line accountability and saying you're not just reporting on your financial metrics. It's about reporting on what's, what your material positive impact you're having across all of your stakeholders. And so that really depends um, kind of on the size and, and, and complexity of the business. And so if you're a smaller business, it might just be a kind of, you know, five page update on some of the things you're doing around volunteering metrics for example or employee engagement but for a larger organization so innocent for example released their 97 page impact report which is beautiful and really well designed and really deep dives into all of those different sections and the improvements that they're making internally so i think it really is around kind of measuring and being transparent about those improvements and reporting on them um, at the kind of same board level as you would around kind of financials um, and kind of being transparent to the rest of your stakeholders and your clients and your customers as well but um yeah it would be useful to hear from from ed on that as well yeah yeah of course yeah and we're, uh, we're actually we're, we're working on an impact report at the moment and we've recently um gone through an absolutely huge in-depth um, carbon audit, kind of detailing our entire supply chain, um, scope one, scope two, scope three, you know, right through to end of life product um, carbon, which we're, we're hoping to kind of share later on this year. Um, and just, just to mention about um, kind of return on investment and investors for us, as, as, a, as a young company, we took investment from some institutional investors and we're currently going through another investment round at the moment and for us um it, it was a really positive thing like the investors were looking for um for companies who were um actively making a positive difference and um in terms of reporting um one of the things that we report on and um someone else mentioned it in in a question about redefining success. For us, success is, um, uh, people might not know, but very, very quickly, so um, for us, for every, pair of, for every pair of sunglasses we sell, we have partnered with a ch charity called Solar Aid, and it pays to distribute like solar lights, a bit like this one, to help eradicate the use of um, kerosene lamps across um, parts of Africa. And for us, like here's, here's one of our boxes. It's it's kind of it's right at the heart of what we do. Um, you know, it's written inside our glasses. It's on all our packaging. It's on our on our casing. And for us, success is how many lives can we change through our um, Share Your Sun project. And that's something that we we report on um, at our board meetings. Um, as well as kind of in our in our impact report as well. Great, thank no thanks Ed, and hopefully those board board meetings are sort of part of the boardroom twenty thirty initiative and taking place somewhere beautiful outside. They will be absolutely. That's on our to do list. <laughs> cool, that's good to hear. Um, thank you for for answering that. Um, Really also just a, a few other questions. I really wanted to know actually, because the B Corp movement is so, is growing and in globally, but UK as you've highlighted, is there sort of one or two B Corps that are really sort of standing out for you at the moment or sort of inspiring you? Um, maybe that the, the audience might not know about. 
Um, yeah, Tom, what about you? Oh, they're all great. And that's an open door to shout about some amazing clients. So thank you, Chris. Um, I'll, I'll resist that um, temptation. But I think, um, I mean, for me, a really, really interesting one to watch at the moment is a company called Vivo Barefoot, who, are, um, who actually have Devon roots, Devon connections, and make incredible low-rise, low-impact footwear that's as close to barefoot as possible. And they are hugely championing um, barefoot living um, and living, you know, much, much closer in harmony with nature. And so a lot of the inspiration um, for actually what we do has come from them. They're great champions of regenerative leadership. Um, but actually they, um, and forgive me sort of for, for linking back to the previous question, um, but one of the things that they are uh, tackling that is most interesting is this question of kind of how do we value success? Um, and what should what should be driving our behaviour? Because um, whoever asked the question is absolutely right. GDP is fundamentally flawed as a measure of success because it is driving all the wrong behaviours that got us into this mess in the first place. Um, but on the flip side, you know, impact is is intensely difficult to, to to measure because you've heard from Ed that it means one thing to him. It means you know it's as broad as it is long and it is like trying to put a pin in jelly. I think the point where we need to get to, and, and Vivo Barefoot are, are really grappling with this, is how do you put, how do you make sure that you put a value on the social and environmental factors um, of what you do and that they reflect in your, um, in your reporting and in your, um, almost in your financials in an integrated sense. Um, so, sorry, answered a couple of questions at the same time. Um, but they're a great example doing exciting stuff. Do look them up and look up their last report, which will give you huge inspiration. Yeah, great. Um, I've they've got also just another to add to what you were saying, Tom. They've got they've got a really good podcast, um, which I've which I've been listening to on and off over the past sort of year or so, um, which is called um, Sustain This, and it's talking about that sustainability is that enough and that regenerative notion uh, regenerative leadership um so do do check that out there's some there's some great conversations on that podcast um and i've i've loved my vivo barefoots i've sort of been using them for about two or three years ago and, and as a runner they're, they're really great um you know running is a big thing for me and i found them really really great um so do check them out um i love their notion as well just to so I don't want to sing their praises too much, but one of the things I love about them is um, their, their sort of framing of, you know, if you can't feel the ground, then how can you protect it? And I think it's something as simple, so simple and so beautiful as that, which really um, inspires me, uh, particularly as sort of my background in nature connection. It's all about the sort of that connection is, is at the heart of it. And um so really, when I saw that and, and, and heard them say that in terms of that framing, I think that's what we need to do in all of our businesses and sort of frame them in, in natural cycles or, or bring in our sort of living systems um, into, the, into the conversation. Um, so, yeah, Catherine, what about you? Who, what B Corp is, exc is exciting you at the moment? I feel like I don't know if I'm allowed a favorite B Corp as a community manager. It's like having, you know, having a favorite child. But some interesting things that I've read recently. Um, so there's a, a company called uh, Ace and Tate, who are also another glasses brand. And in their announcement, they um, did a, a whole piece around all of the mistakes they've made. And it was like, here, here is where we've messed up. And it was a really interesting frame, framing around transparency and actually saying, Companies aren't perfect. It's about being open and it's about being transparent along that journey, which I thought was a really interesting framing. Um, and then another uh, a B Corp that I think is really interesting recently is a company called Tenzing who make um, energy drinks. And so they actually, a big focus of theirs is around air pollution. Um, and so they partnered with some academics that I think it was Imperial. Um, and they actually funded a study into um, air pollution in different areas and now have released um, a clean air tracker which actually you can track your run and it kind of maps out the cleaner air route and so I thought it was just such a, an amazing kind of real positive impact and really thinking about environmental impact and kind of sharing that with the community as well so um, yeah really great example 
but I'm not really allowed favourites. <laughs> That's fab. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, what about you, Ed? Um, oh, favourite people. Um, oh, I don't know. There are, yeah, there, there, there are loads. I mean, oh, I would say Ben and Jerry's, but it might be because I like ice cream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there are there are there are so many and I often find myself kind of looking through like the B Corp kind of register and just almost surprising myself that like wow like one I didn't know they were a B Corp or two you know isn't that amazing like you know and you just uncover all these um amazing companies mm. yeah no it's yeah it, no, it's fab and it's growing and that's such a, such a great thing to see. And I, yeah, I love ice cream as well. <laughs> um, so that's a good one. I think one as well that's, um, maybe I forgot to just answer my own question, is Triodos Bank. Um, it's great to see sort of, not just sort of um, a whole range of different companies and that sort of finance space, I think really needs to, to sort of speak up. And um, it's great to see banking um, and Triodos Bank, a B Corp, and I'd encourage you all, if, if you're not ready, to um, to switch your bank to Triodos. Um, it's, it's a really simple thing to do. And um, it's sort of, I did it last year and it was just, yeah, so simple and, and straightforward and really, really worthwhile. Um, so that's one from me. Thanks, um, Catherine, for putting that in the chat for, for people to have a look at. Um, any more questions, keep them coming. Um, if I've missed some, I'll just try and skim through now. But um, there's a quote in there. Uh, thank you, Andy, um, for saying, I saw a Mark Twain quote the other day. If you never tell me, a, tell a lie, you never need to remember anything. Thanks for that, Andy. Um, so you... there's, there's a, a question in there for Ed about... Um, are we a for-profit with B Corp or a social enterprise? Which is an interesting question. And I guess it kind of depends on kind of what your distinction is. I mean, for us, we are, yes, we are a for-profit. Um, I would say like we're, we're kind of both, although we're not kind of certified as a social enterprise. We, we wouldn't call ourselves a social enterprise. We would call ourselves a more than profit business. Um, I guess a lot of... Um, Although there are lo loads of social enterprises that, you know, that scale and make profit, a lot of social enterprises um, are geared to put their profit kind of into good causes, whereas we build our, um, our kind of good causes into our business model. So our profit then stays as kind of profit, which can go to, I guess, you know, investors or shareholders or um, whatever. So slightly different model um it kind of depends how how you look at it there are so many similarities there because you know we're, we're at the end of the day trying to achieve kind of the same thing in terms of being a better business being a force for good um but um that's that's kind of where where we stand i hope that's hope that's helpful oh yeah really helpful Thanks, Ed. I, I just feel um, drawn to blow Ed's trumpet for him because on your question about which are our favourite B Corps, I mean, yeah, like Catherine, I, I, you know, it would be unfair to, it is unfair to call anyone out, but I think there is a type of B Corp that um, Ed represents really well. Businesses that were a B Corp before, before they knew about B Corp, you know, there are plenty who try and sort of retrofit it and they're a normal business, but they say, we want to become a B Corp, what do we need to do for change? But then the really exciting ones are the ones like Bird, who you know have just built their model for the, from the passion of the founders along these lines. And then at some stage in their journey, it has made sense to certify, and quite rightly so. Um, but I think, Ed, hats off to you and the businesses like you that just build impact into the model from day one. Thank you. Yeah, and I think, do, do you think that's um, sort of companies you're working with, Tom, is that, um, is that common? I mean, for, for me, I'm sort of my, um, at the moment, I'm sort of thinking, well, that's just normal. Like, I've sort of my age and when, how long I've been involved in this, I'm sort of like, why would you not do that? <laughs> um, is that sort of, do you, do you work with a mixture of companies, Tom, around those sort of trying to sort of, 
I don't know if sort of redoing wrongs is the right framing, but do you find those that are doing that or have that sort of ethos and, and passion from the start? I'd, I'd say I'd say in order for it to get off the ground, somebody in the business has to have the ethos and passion um, and the energy to drive this because otherwise it will just fail. Um, the majority of the businesses that we work with are the kind of, I don't know, we should call them the recoverers or the realigners. They're, they're realigning their business with these values. It's not what they were founded on necessarily, or maybe it was, and they've just kind of lost sight of that over the, the period of their evolution. Um, you know, we've got plenty of clients like Bird who do, you know, who have done it that way. And so the question is not sort of get us certified. It's more, you know, how can we get to the next level or how can we do exciting things with supply chain or whatever? But, you know, I, I, I think one of the, in the early days when I was having conversations about this, there was a lot of stuff about, you know, well, we don't want, I'm not from B Lab or from us, but people we spoke to saying, well, why we don't want to do this if we think that large corporations are going to get involved. You know, this should be a pure movement for businesses who, who you know, have always subscribed to this. I, I don't agree with that, I'm afraid. I, I think it's incumbent on every business to align with these values. And in fact, the bigger you are and the worse you are, the more responsibility you have to sort yourself out and, and um, you know, ultimately become a B Corp or aspire to become a B Corp. So I think it's, um, it's all really exciting, but I think it is companies like Bird that are really setting the pace and inspiring others. Yeah, awesome, Tom. Um, there's a question come through about B Corp being in the UK. Um, as Catherine mentioned, it's a global global movement. Actually, I believe started in the US. Um, do you want to add any more to that, Catherine? Yeah, so we um, we've got B Corps and I think over over seventy three countries in the world. And so it's often my favourite activity. If I go on holiday, I go onto the B Corp website and I see if there's B Corps in that place. And so there's a B Corp in Mongolia. There's B Corps in like so many different countries across Europe. And yeah, there really are B Corps in in almost every country, which is so exciting as well, that it really is a, a global movement and not just in the UK. And so collectively, so I think the US and Canada have the um, the highest number of B Corps, I think it's about 1,300, but they have been around for about 10, 10 more years in the UK, so we're catching them up. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Um, we've got about five minutes left, so um, if you've got any final questions, do, do, do submit them. We'll, we'll try and draw things to a, clo to a close. Um, it's a beautiful evening where I am, but um, so... I want to get out and enjoy um jump in the sea um there was a, a a comment earlier i don't know if jonathan is still with us we mentioned he's going for a swim on the swim in the plymouth hole after this so do go and join in um, yeah i'll be there i'll be there so jump in with us <laughs> great to hear um and i just had a couple a couple more things really to um to to maybe just sort of reflect on and, and wrap up on um, around sort of just, you know, if you could say one thing to to a business who's, who's thinking about this, what, what would it be um, and why? I know you, you lovely mentioned two takeaways in your sessions, but um, what would that one thing be if, if someone, a business was, was engaging with you? Um, what would that be? What would you say to them and why? Um, Ed, maybe we could start with you. Um, yeah, I, I would say yes, absolutely do it. And the why is because change is needed. And um, I think it's, it's an eye-opening experience for every business that goes through it. And um, it always changes them for the better. So, yeah, there's kind of no... Uh, not many downsides apart from kind of the time and or cost that you know that might be involved but at this stage I think that's where or that's where we need to be putting in the time and effort. Uh, Catherine what about you? 
Sorry, I was getting very distracted. There's been lots of questions in the chat for me, <laughs> which I've been answering. What was the what was the question? It was around um, a sort of if you could say one thing in terms of a piece of advice um, to to a business who's thinking about B Corp, um, or what would it be and why? I think it really would be just like get started, jump in like don't be don't be overwhelmed and and I think it's it's really the the idea of kind of continuous improvement and the fact that no business is perfect and it's kind of great that everyone is on this journey and thinking about it and really engaging with the fact that you can do business differently and and have an impact on your business is great so I think it would be a a form of encouragement about you know starting the journey and it's it can be with the goal of certification at the end or just thinking about how to kind of improve your impact um as well so yeah get get started awesome and yeah tom um so yeah I'd, I'd jump in a really really good piece of advice but i think um my my um suggestion would be go to your senior teams you know next tomorrow next time you meet them and just talk about these topics, talk about where you stand, where you want your, you know, where you want your business to stand and what the implications are going to be if you do or don't um, talk about it and start to formulate plans. So it's all about getting the conversation going. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. Um, as, as Tom mentioned, um, in his in his sessions we are collaborating to run some uh, b corp workshops so if you're in the audience and you're a local devon based business we're going to be running some workshops throughout october and november um for you to sort of outline the five key areas of the b impact assessment um, through a series of workshops at the sustainability hub at the university of plymouth um, i'm just going to drop a link in the chat to to more information about that so do, do check that out, do share that. Um, you, more information is on there and you can sort of register and that goes through to me and then we can have a conversation. Um, so really encourage you to check that out. Um, just want to wrap up really and just say thank you to everyone who's, who's come along. Um, thank you for, for sort of sharing this little bit of time together. Um, thank you to, to Ed, to, to Catherine and to, to Tom as well. Um, we're going to be doing some more events. I mentioned at the start, we've got um, an open day next Wednesday in University of Plymouth campus, the Sustainability Hub building in the afternoon. It's part of the Fab City network. Uh, Plymouth is a, a fab city, which is a global movement for change. Uh, I think it's the only city in the UK to be, to be signed up to the Fab City movement. So do come along to that. Um, that's next Wednesday, the 22nd. Um, Myself, I'm going to be there, other members of our team, if you just want to chat to us and find out what we do. Um, so that's an open invite to, to everyone on the call. Um, and then looking ahead, we're going to be doing some more events as well um, throughout October, November and December. So if you're not ready, get in touch with me and I can sign you up to our, our, our mailing list or events list. Um, I'm always open for a chat. Um, for people who want to chat and, and I, I'm sure maybe Ed and, and Tom are as well and Catherine and B-Lab. There's no such thing as a bad question. Really do get in touch. Um, we need that sense of curiosity um, and that sense of openness, I think, and that sense of collaboration. Um, so maybe if we could just hear a little snippet from, from each of you, um, Ed, Catherine and Tom, as we finish, maybe if you could just, if, if you're able to share maybe um, three words that highlight your, your sort of, your thinking about the future. So three words, to maybe either three words to describe the type of world you want to live in um, in five years time, or three words to describe your sort of feeling or thinking about what's emerging. I'll give you two seconds to think of thinking time um Catherine should we start with you yes I was thinking wow what a question that is I can think of two words I can think of stay positive and I don't have a third word so yeah I think 
I think Tom really summed it up when he spoke earlier about kind of we have to just stay positive and, and kind of think about the, the things that we can do rather than getting getting overwhelmed about the things that we can't change. Um, so stay positive and then maybe with an exclamation mark as an extra word at the end would be my answer. Uh, how about you, Ed? Um, mine would be just kind of, well, I think one word by itself would just be change and then just kind of global community. Um, I think like more than ever, like it's just people, companies, countries need to be working together more and more. Awesome, thanks Ed. And um, yeah. I think that's one of the hardest questions I've ever been asked. Um, keep the faith, but do something. <laughs> and then more stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for that curveball. I'm just, just keeping you on your toes. Um, awesome. That's good. Yeah, that's great. Keep the faith. Um, you know, everything there is what we need, isn't it? That sense of sort of, yeah, global change, community, staying positive, hopeful. Um, awesome. Thank you. Uh, thanks again. Thanks to all of you who've been here. Very grateful for you coming. And yeah, as I said, do get in touch with me, but I think we'll leave it there for now. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone and make the most of these sort of the winding down of the summer. Get outside, enjoy some fresh air and hopefully see you soon. <laughs>